Hey guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Anna and welcome to today's video which is one of my most highly requested videos on my channel it's how I study in dental school I always try to incorporate my study methods and how I actually study within my vlogs but I've never done a sit down video where I just sit down and talk to you guys and explain in detail how I study so first things first I am a dental student I am in my fifth and final year in dental school and I feel like I've learned a few things during my time in dental school I had good experiences and bad experiences and I do not follow all of these tips for every single exam that I'm taking but whenever I do that's when I get the best results just a few things for you guys to know in Germany in dental school we do not get grades on our usual day-to-day -day exams you either pass an exam or you don't and those exams are usually multiple choice however we do have state exams which take place after fifth semester and our tenth semester and these state exams have multiple exams they're all oral exams and that's when you get grades and these grades actually do matter we do have practical exams in dental school but for that practice makes perfect you just have to be there you just have to grind I think it's really helpful when people explain how they study and just to hear a bunch of different approaches to studying is always really nice because there is no one perfect way to it and I wouldn't declare myself as a perfect student I do know how to study sometimes I'm just a little bit lazy when it comes to studying I feel very Gen Z and a little bit of shame when I'm admitting that I couldn't do it without my phone I love having my phone as my best friend when it comes to studying at the same time I don't want to use it the entire time but no matter where we are at school at home out with friends I think one thing we can all agree on we want our phones to be protected but also looking cute which is why I'm so excited to be working with case on today's video showing you their brand new cloud cush phone cases the cloud cush phone cases feature an air cushion technology which makes these phone cases feel cloud like super lightweight smooth to touch while it's also being shock absorbing and having a three meter military grade drop resistance I personally I drop my phone all the time or I throw it around I throw it onto my bed I throw it onto my couch I sometimes even throw it onto my desk which is just great to know that if I drop my phone like this it's gonna be safe. Caseco is also holding a campaign where you can enter and win an iPad and all you have to do is upload a video to your social media telling the world how you relieve stress and tagging Caseco while it's also using the hashtag East with Cloud Cush. Make sure to check out Caseco via the link in the description box down below and save 10% on your orders by using my code 10 and a new bit. Thank you so much to Case Coop for sponsoring today's video and let's get back into it. Okay, so I want to start off with the most basic tips and they are the most annoying ones and I do not follow them all the time but they really do make a difference from the get-go. Tip number one, attend your lectures and seminars and actually sit down, take part, listen and take notes. I would recommend not to write down everything during a lecture but if you get a lecture beforehand, if you get the slides, read through them whilst you listen to the lecture and take down notes for things that aren't included in the papers. Once you are done with your lecture, it's also always really, really helpful to talk about it with your classmates or your friends. Just have a little recap of like five minutes, even if it's just a, oh, I really didn't like today's lecture. It was really hard to follow. It was fast paced. I didn't fully grasp that. And sometimes during those five minutes of chit chat, you will talk about topics that were actually important and it will help you to revise things and really understand them. Don't be too proud or too shy or too embarrassed to ask a question during a lecture. Ask questions when they occur to you, not when you're at home. And then tip number two is to actually go home and revise the lectures. This is where you could already rewrite everything and take your own notes with different note-taking techniques or you just go through everything and just read through it. That's totally up to you, but revising at home is actually helpful. Let's talk study methods. Now, before we talk about the details, the nitty gritty, we have different types of exams, as I already mentioned in dental school. So I wanna give you just a rough overview of how I study for the different types of exams that we have. And then I go into details about my study method, note taking and all that kind of good stuff. So for my normal day to day finals during my semester in dental school, I would 
try to see what I would have to study for, take a look at the semester, like the time plan, the lectures that we had, and determine the workload, and then make a time plan. So for a normal final, I usually study for like about a week, sometimes it's less, very rarely it's more. It's usually about like six to seven days that I take for myself to study for an exam. And when I have like seven days, I usually take four days to revise, to rewrite notes, to go through things, to understand things, and then three things for like pure revision, using flashcards and just memorizing everything. As I already said, I study with study cards and practice exams because we do have a lot of old questions reoccurring, so that's something that I really like to use. But I also use study cards and flashcards just for things to really fully understand them because it's always helpful to understand a topic, not just to memorize the right answer, but to understand why this answer is the right one and then for like a normal exam i usually study for like four hours every single day if it's a normal weekday sometimes it's only two but on the weekends i try to take four hours six hours up to eight hours depending on how much i still have going on besides school but especially when you have a free day available try to use that and work effectively it's not always about how much time you invest for studying it's also how you use that time. And then there are the state exams, the big ones. There's so much workload for that. It's usually like five semesters of workload that you have to study. It's great. Obviously you can't study for that within a week. You need a lot of time. And this is where a full out time plan is necessary. Like you just need a time plan for that. And you should make that months ahead. So I already had one state exam. So my exams took place early September and I started writing out a time plan, I think in May, and I started studying June. Sit down, you print out a calendar or you download it onto your iPad and then you just schedule everything out. You have to know when your exams are going to take place one week before an exam takes place. I try to avoid learning new things okay it's just about memorizing it's just about repeating it's about talking about things in your study group it's not about learning new things at that point if it's a lot of information use your time effectively take out a long time the more time you just plan out over like weeks the less time you have to invest every single day and the more time you still have for your life to go on besides studying. So something that doesn't change is I still prepare study card flashcards. I study with those. That's just what's most effective to me. I also try to act out possible questions that you could receive. As I said, our exams are oral exams, which makes it a little bit tricky. You know, you kind of have a rough idea of what the entrance question could be, but you don't really know what's going to happen and follow up afterwards. So having a practice exam even for these types of exams is really really helpful just for you to prepare yourself of like how you're going to have that conversation it's always nice to ask somebody a friend somebody in your study group your parents your roommate just ask them if they could just ask you questions make it a pop quiz and see how you would react to different kinds of questions all right so now that we have the basics done let's talk about the nitty-gritty about the actual study methods first things first Preparation. For me, this is note-taking and there are so many different kinds of note-taking techniques. I don't know all of them, but something that I really like to do is just outlining. I'm basic when it comes to that. I love a good outlined note-taking method, just writing everything down as it comes. That's how I studied in high school. Some things never change. To me, it also looks the cleanest. I used to take notes on paper, now I'm using my iPad. And it's just aesthetically pleasing, but also structured. And especially on the iPad, when you have the search function, it's so easy to find things with this note-taking method. But I also really like mind maps, just to get an overall structure and overview over a topic. Let's say we're talking about the anatomy of the heart. The way how I would do this, I would probably start with a mind map when I start to prepare my notes and I try to write out everything that I need to know about the heart. What kind of different anatomy key points are there to take a look at? To get an overview, having a mind map is really, really helpful. Then I would write out everything in detail with the outlining method. And once I'm done with that, and I went through every single book that I found on planet Earth, this is where I could use the Cornell method. I personally like to make it challenging and make it a one page only 
kind of thing. And I don't do it for every single topic. I only do it for topics where I felt like it was a lot of work. If you just want to go through it one more time, and if you want to have a one-pager to just look at when you want to revise things, this is where the Cornell method is really, really helpful. Note-taking for me is not for memorizing, it's just for understanding and grasping a topic fully. And then there are the brain dumps. The brain dumps are my favorite when it comes to actually studying. So when I'm studying with flashcards, especially with good notes, they offer you a little brain dump paper and that's where I would write things down. Just having a brain dump and writing down everything that you know about a topic or like a question is really really helpful. The apps that I use, as I already mentioned, I like to study with my iPad and the apps that I use are Good Notes, Study Smarter and Forest. Forest is actually not on my iPad. I have Forest on my iPhone and Forest pretty much keeps me from using my phone and keeps me from having distractions. But I also put my phone on do not disturb. Very important for me personally. I do not want to see any notification so that I am not intrigued to take my phone and look at things and look at dms and stuff like that i don't want to know because as soon as i know somebody texted me i want to read their message if i don't know that somebody has texted me i don't care so good notes is probably my go-to app because it has everything that you could possibly need and now has a recording function which is really really nice it's pretty much the only app that you really need you can create flashcards within there you can do space of repetition however i do find the flashcards to be a little bit annoying sometimes and i prefer the space of repetition system and ai that they're using with study smarter just for flashcards Study Smarter is my favorite. It's also a little bit easier to share within study groups because not everybody is using good notes. The music that I listen to. I personally like listening to music when I'm studying, but I cannot listen to anything that includes lyrics. I will listen to the lyrics. That's distracting. I personally love classical music. I think it's actually scientifically proven that classical music helps with studying and it stimulates your brain. My study methods, my study techniques, I follow two well-known studying techniques. First one is Pomodoro technique, which means that you study for a set amount of time and then you take a break. I study for one hour in a row and then I take 15 minutes of a break. I don't do 25 minutes and five minutes, which is the very classic approach to Pomodoro. For me, that's too small of a frame, but I never study for more than one and a half hours because that's when my brain is just dead. I cannot focus. I do not take in new information. My performance gets worse and that's when I lose motivation and focus and it's just over for me. I think that's also scientifically proven that you cannot actually work for more than one and a half hours effectively because that's when you start getting tired and that's when you actually do need a break. So I do about two to three of these one hour sessions and then I take a very big break, like a lunch break, you can even take a nap. I think it's really important that during your breaks you do something that has absolutely nothing to do with studying though. Take a walk, watch something on Netflix, eat something, call somebody, talk to somebody, just something that has absolutely nothing to do with school. And the second study method that I use that is very well known and that I've already mentioned a couple of times during this video is spaced out repetition. Spaced out repetition is my favorite way of studying. It pretty much means that you start on day one studying every single thing and there are usually questions that you are inclined to answer a lot faster. You get from the get-go, It's they just make sense to you. These you do not have to study and repeat every single day. There are a lot of great apps like Study Smarter that have AI for space of repetition. So you don't have to do the math, you do not have to plan out which flashcards you're going to study the next day. They pretty much tell you based on your performance when you should repeat a certain set of flashcards. Space of repetition requires a lot of time. It's definitely not for those times when you start studying a week ahead. It works and you can do it in a very modified way, but space of repetition is very, very helpful and it just works wonders when you take out a lot of time for studying. It's what I did for my first state exam. It allowed me to still have free time and I still went through questions that I already knew the answers to and that I performed well at because it gave me a confidence boost, but I knew that those would only take me like five minutes. It also really helped me to get questions that I wasn't good at. Okay, and last but not least, I think it's really important that you know your studying type. Personally, as I already said, 
for me, note taking is just to understand a topic, but not to memorize. For memorizing, I'm somebody, I have to talk, I have to speak, I have to read things out loud, I have to walk around, I cannot sit still when studying, that's the worst for me. I have to walk around, I walk in circles, and that's just what works best for me. Some people like to sit down and read through everything, some people like to talk about things with other people, some people like to sit still, some people like to walk around, but I think at the end of the day it's just really important that you know your studying type. I also work well with brain dumps, like if I know there are people around, I cannot talk. A brain dump on a piece of paper works fine for me. Actually talking about things is much more effective for me, which is why I also like study groups, but I cannot do this if I haven't fully grasped a topic yet. I use pop quizzes, I use practice exams, I use flashcards because those things work well for me. You kind of have to figure out what worked well for you. Like one of my best friends, she studies by reading a book and that works well for her. And then she's like, that's common sense, got it. For me, mm -mm. I have to work through it, I have to understand it and then I memorize. There are a bunch of different study techniques like the method of Loki where you create a memory palace that a lot of people love and personally for me that was not effective. I tried it, it didn't work. You have to figure out what works for you and Lastly, I wanted to end today's video with tips and tricks on how to stay motivated because it's not just about the studying methods, it's also about how do I actually stay motivated and how do I stay focused, especially with very time requesting and time demanding majors like medical school, law school, dental school, those things they drain you. You're low in energy and it's a little bit harder to stay motivated some days especially because we in dental school we also have practical classes. You get home you're really tired and it's not always easy to stay motivated and to have enough energy which is why I really wanted to include it in today's video of like how I stay motivated. Those are just things that I figured out over the last couple of years that have helped me and might help you, but it's not a guarantee foolproof method of how to stay motivated. Don't work for too long in a row, very, very important. Take breaks, which is also why you should reward yourself at the end of the day or even after just one study session. Eat candy, have your favorite drink at the end of the day, go out with your friends, go to the gym, do things that you actually enjoy. Do not quit your social life just for studying. There's nothing worse than having a tightly crammed schedule and no time for the things that you actually love doing. Creating a time plan, having more structure, is really, really helpful. Maybe that's just me. I love having a time plan. Excel, Excel is great for time plans. I love Excel, okay? But you can do it old school, print out a calendar as I already said, write it out on a whiteboard, on a piece of paper. Get enough sleep. Okay, listen, I'm sleep deprived a lot of the time. I'm a sleep procrastinator, but even I know that when you want to do well in school and you want to study well, you still have to get in enough sleep. Three hours of sleep is not enough. All-nighters are unhealthy. An all-nighter is not making you cool. If you go to an exam, you arrive there and being like, I didn't sleep last night. That does not make you cool. That does not make you cool. That does not make you smart. Your performance will be worse because you are just that as tired. Figure out your biorhythm and use your energy highs during the day to your own advantage. It's scientifically proven that you need sleep to actually memorize things and even a nap can already be helpful. And last but not least, let's get a little bit cheesy. Grades aren't everything. Doing well in school is beneficial for your future and it's kind of necessary but having good grades isn't everything that your life should be about. When studying, you should also kind of let go of the mindset of I want to have the best grade ever. For me personally, I like to study because I hate feeling dumb. I hate not being able to give an answer and that's what I try to keep in mind when I'm studying is I actually want to understand these things. I actually want to learn new things and I want to do well for my own self, not only for my grades. I want to have a great future. I want to have a great grad paper. I want to be able to apply wherever I want to, wherever I like. Grades are important for that, but grades aren't everything. Also live your life and enjoy life in college and uni as much as you can. I can now say these things because I'm in my final year. I'm about to graduate really soon, guys. Like, I'm now on summer break, but I'm going back in October and it's going to be my last semester in dental school, which feels crazy, but I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking back on the last five years in dental school and I enjoyed all of them and I've created so many great memories. I think I'm going to miss studying a little bit once I'm done, but I'm saying this now, okay? I still have my state exam coming up next year. You're gonna see me cry, you're gonna see me 
sleep deprived you're gonna see me begging for it all just to end but i think it's all going to be great that being said i hope you guys like today's video i hope some of these things might have been helpful i hope you have a great day i will see you guys in next week's video up until then stay safe